All right, we've had a week off. Let's get back to it. Path to Diamond. We're just going to have a few warm-up games here. You know, nothing too serious. We're just going to try and have a bit of fun. 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 Fuck. Yep, settling folks, this one's going to be a long one. Uh, I'm playing against uh, green-white here, which is like playing against green, only uh, only slower. Early on in this game, I get my pretty standard opening, and I think I'm doing quite well, you know. I'm just hammering this guy as hard as I can, as quickly as I can, because I can't let him get this whole regenerating life gain thing going uh, it's such a an awful mechanic life gain uh, and i know why it's in the game but it just means that everything takes so much longer because you're not actually attacking your opponent you just you, you're just wearing them down you're wearing the human man down you know you know how magic right has these these psychographic archetypes you know the ones the 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 johnny and and tammy and spike in arena it's more like jordan nobody and greg like no one is playing arena for the love of the cards that they have in the deck so so tammy can just fuck right off johnny who's me in this in this model of things is seemingly the only person on the ladder who's actually made his own deck and is, is actually trying to win by, you know, for a love of the game. And then Spike, Spike is Greg. There are no real Spikes. People who, who go on Reddit slash R slash Spike are actually all called Greg. And following the universal principle of Greg's are all wankers. A Greg thinks that they're a Spike, wears it as a badge of pride. But, um... Greg is an is a moron, and so will stubbornly ride his white life gain night deck all the way to the bottom of platinum. This deck that's being played here, it wouldn't stand a chance against a you know an Embercleave deck or a, a Zorius control deck. But because I'm playing a green monster deck, he can just plod along and take. Look at this sat there on three health. What a dickhead! Um, there's me top decking Nissa. Great. That'll just drag this out for another five minutes. <laughs> My mistake in this match was not conceding immediately, because look where we are now. I got my big creatures. He's got his big creatures. We bounced off each other a bit. We're both top decking, except he's playing white. So he can just regenerate any damage that I do to him. And... Um, and drag this out to its to its logical conclusion, which is I lose because you know as the as the loading screen says, your life is a resource. Don't be afraid to spend it, or in the case of Greg, don't be afraid to hoard it. We're going to cut to the end here because this this I've already pissed away seven minutes of my life playing this through the first time. I'm not going to waste another seven of both of ours watching it all again. Could I have played more aggressively? No. Could I have played more conservatively? Well, it wouldn't have helped. So, uh, yeah, not not sure what we've learned from this one, except uh, don't play against white. Anyway, it's a bit of a palate cleanser. This is me getting hosed by another Embercleave deck. Uh, that, look, I am acutely aware of the irony here of bitching about people who play the same deck relentlessly and drag matches out and don't seem to learn from their mistakes and then I lose to another Embercleave deck. But here's the thing, right? I actually have learned from my mistakes here. I've even got the uh, the old Return to Nature in there and I actually use it. Look, this is me. This is me making proactive steps forward. Except this guy just can flash out a 100 billion damage straight from his hand. So, you know, I just 
death by a thousand tiny cuts here. So that's that's inspiring, isn't it? Even when things go ideally, I still lose to an aggro deck. So at this point, I am feeling pretty tilted. All the all the effort that's been put in last week is just all evaporating in front of me. You know what? We're gonna, we're gonna get our head down. We're not gonna let ourselves get distracted. I have to win this one. Oh god, it's gonna be a graveyard deck, isn't it? Oh, all these things he's putting into his graveyard are gonna come back. Uh, so, okay. Commentary. Let's let's return to the original premise of this series, which is that I talk to you about what's going through my head when I'm playing this match. And uh, right now, what's going through my head is, oh, I hate Death Touch. I hate it so much. It's such a pain in the ass because the only currency that I have in my deck is uh, is creatures. So I'll, I'll retain my Voracious Hydra uh, for as long as I can manage. Because it's it's a it's sort of summon ability to do direct removal is useful, but it's uh, it's value to use with in, in combination with uh, with Vivian's Chomp is much much more valuable. This is an interesting example of how the the tenor of a of a match can change even between turns because I played that Questing Beast out. Uh, to get a, an early bit of board presence, but seeing how aggressive he's being in response suggests to me that maybe he's he's not so confident in it in the long term strength of his deck. Maybe he's worried that it won't, uh, you know, he won't be able to trigger this graveyard effect, or you know, he, he'll burn out or not get you know the mana that he needs. So. And this right here, you know, this rabbit bite is in, is just super. I'm just sat here thinking, what what's the priority here? It, you know, is it taking part as a machine? Is it protecting myself from direct damage? And in the end, I decide this is cheaper than Vivian, and it keeps... Uh, it keeps her off the board. The, the problem with bringing Vivian out to chomp straight away is it does leave her with only one um, loyalty. Which means, you know, uh, unless you've got a creature advantage, you can't protect her. This is great news for me. Uh, <laughs> and again, getting extremely lucky here with my draw. I mean, you can say that, but a lot of my deck is these cheap uh you know perpendicular moves <laughs> and it's always a good sign when you get a sarcastic nice uh out of your opponent yeah a lot of this deck is built around two cost three cost uh creatures which force your opponent to make awkward choices or give you much more freedom to make good choices here i do in in the end decide to just um use the ferocious hydra for direct removal because um uh the death touch you know you can trade up really high with a death touch creature so it has to come off the board and this here this moment when i when i bring uh vivian out i'm pretty confident that i've won you know he's on six health i've got a massive card advantage i've got my board presence i've won this and, I, I, and he's going to quit, you know, imminently. However, to bring this back to our discussion of Greg's, uh, this guy, uh, God almighty, there he goes playing a big growth card. It's not going to help him. I've got Death Touch on my Questing Beast. Uh, my Questing Beast can grow much. Oh, right. He's... Yeah, he's making that bigger. He can't really add up. Uh, this is a situation where, you know, 
is he going to top deck some sort of horrible woman? You know, is it Vraska, the one that lets you just bring everything back from the dead? Or is it going to be that one spell that turns everything that's died into insects? I'd get out of the way if I were you. Um, I'm pretty sure I've won this, you know. He can only block f f three of my damage. And, like, at this point, he is just top decking. So, I don't know, man. I feel like I've won this. Why isn't he conceding? Why is this going on for so long? It's that stubbornness. It's that, it's that, you know. And I've done this. I can't blame him. And this pause right here is fairly indicative of what it feels like to play against white decks in general. Because <laughs> he's just looking back over his, his mock creatures. This graveyard is just filled with you know, five minutes of, of poor tactical choices. And, um, yeah, my decision-making in this match has been pretty straightforward. It's just that, you know, my deck curves out better than his does. And I would love to know what his deck list is. I'd love to know what, what the big hammer that he was supposed to bring in that would have won him this match was. In the end, you know, after what feels like an eternity, he makes a sensible choice and brings out a creature that can block my questing beast. Uh, unfortunately, he seems to have forgotten that I get trample on everything. So, like, there's literally no set of choices that he could make to block. What is that? 13 trample damage. Okay, so that's 13, and now he's got 5 lifelink, so that's 7. So, yeah, I mean, he's he still... In the end, I, I decided to chomp. So he doesn't even get the lifelink out of it. Um, I could have just ran into him and it still wouldn't have made a difference. And this is the, the crazy thing, you know? Is that stubbornness? Ineptitude? Is it just gall? No way to know. What can we take away from today's... Uh, what can we take away from today's uh, matches? Well, um, sometimes you just got to play half an hour of Magic the Gathering to lose uh, one position in your rank. Oh, oh, what a wonderful... Magic the Gathering, a, a fun, interactive deck building game. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. God help me. I'm going to be stuck in Platinum forever.